That's very kind. Thank you, everybody. It was very sweet to hear the uh, history, how this evolved, very organic, very natural, uh, I, I, you know, coming from energy of, you know, a living sense of the teachings, which is just where I live. That's what motivates me too. So I, I feel uh, something in common with, with all of you. Um, and it's a perfect place to uh, begin our pre preparation, really, for the Dharma contemplation. Um, since you've been practicing it, you know um, how it unfolds in layers. Uh, and those layers are really, you know, a reflection, however rough, of how our minds, how our hearts work, you know, that, uh, that, the, that the Buddha's words can come into us uh, through, uh, you know, just the power of the words themselves, even if we don't know what they mean and how they touch us and move us in ways that we often miss if we go quickly, but also the intellect is allowed. It's, we don't fear it. We just don't let it take over. And you know, of course, the Dhamma will always invite us to an edge where the language begins to let go, where there's some uh, meaning or some essence that we don't really know how we understand it, but we trust that we do. Something like that. And finally, how does it touch us as human beings? How does it enter our lives? And so we enter into dialogue just here and now, just what, what's true now. But for all of this to unfold in its you know, full potential, it's helpful to reflect back, to even imagine ourselves in the time of the Buddha and these teachings were offered verbally, orally. They weren't written. And if someone heard the Buddha was going to, you know, be in town in the village and give a talk, it's like, oh, you know, there's this teacher who's come to town. The good word is said of him. He's supposed to be, you know fully awakened and it's a good to go see a fully awakened one and people would walk <laughs> really far you know they would really make enormous effort to go hear an awakened one they couldn't just go to online or to a bookstore and get a book you know this was it it was this or nothing and they would make that effort and so when they sat there ready to receive, they didn't know what. It was the one chance, you know? They couldn't go back and read it if they missed something. They couldn't watch the video. This was it. And so when they would gather in a hall or out in the, you know, on Vulture's Peak, just out in the, amongst the stones or in the woods, like the Gosinga Sala tree wood or the, you know, by the Ganges, many talks were given. It wasn't just something that looked like a meditation hall, even an old meditation hall. It was just wherever. And they would sit and they would be ready to receive. And so in the same way here now, we find ourselves ready to receive these words. So there's a mind of availability, a mind of not knowing, um, of respect, because these, you know, even though the, there's always things that happen as a result of translation and history and so on, from human being to human being, over 2,500 years, this is as close as we do get to the actual words of a living human being 
uh, who was, you know, who we refer to as the Buddha, Gautama, the awakened one, Buddha. So we'll first hear from one Buddha speaking these words, and then there'll be a pause. We'll hear from another Buddha. We'll hear the same words. And I will then introduce the first phase instructions, which most of you know, but it's good to hear them and be refreshed. And then at the end of each phase, I'll ring a bell. We'll have a moment of silence. I'll introduce the next phase. So I don't have to do it all now. We don't have to store anything. We can just be in the moment together. So if the first boot is ready, what I'll do is I'll ring a bell, we'll drop into silence, and in a couple of minutes, that first Buddha could read, then there'll be a pause. The second Buddha reads, then I'll come in with the instructions. And Kirsten, you could read first, uh, but after a pause, like we'll have some silence, then let your voice come right out of the silence with the kind of centeredness, the confidence of the Buddha. You're just speaking what you know to be true. And then after Kirsten finishes, Flavio, wait just a little bit, and then you speak these words also, just as the truth that you, as you know it. Very natural, very confident, no theater, just truth, you know? Great. So here's for silence. And may our practice be of benefit.